gathering as the community of St Mary's at Sprotborough. Today we're thinking about complaining. I wonder if you ever complain to God about your lot and how tough life is. We're going to listen to a reading from the Old Testament which is a song of complaint by the prophet Jeremiah. A reading from Jeremiah Chapter 15, verses 15 to 21. Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer. Reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revellers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me and you filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you to rescue and to save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. In the passage read to us this morning by Eleanor, we see one of Jeremiah's lament. Indeed, the, the book of Lamentations has been attributed to the prophet Jeremiah. But what is a lament? The Oxford English Dictionary explains it like this. A passionate expression of grief or sorrow. A song, a piece of music or song expressing grief or sorrow, or a complaint. In the Psalms we read, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept. In a recent daily magazine newsletter that I receive, it said, of the top 100 new worship songs written since the outbreak of COVID-19, only one has been a lament. Should we be lamenting? Grief, sorrow, complaining about our loss to God seems appropriate just now. So what have we lost? We grieve for the loss of freedom that we took for granted pre-lockdown. We were free to go where we wanted to go, home or abroad. We had no need of face coverings to go into shops, onto buses or trains. We could meet where we wanted, with whom we wanted. We could go to concerts, to events. We could sing in church without restrictions. Many have lost loved ones to this deadly disease. Fathers, mothers, sons, daughters and friends. For many, the funeral has had to be postponed until a safe time to grieve as we would wish. It is almost as though life is on hold. Someone has pushed the pause button. Should we have been prepared? In recent years, we've seen various diseases breaking out in other parts of the world. SARS. It affected 86 countries, but not the UK. Ebola. Affecting mainly African countries, but not the UK. There doesn't appear to be a Jeremiah warning about this impending threat to the world. But it has arrived. It is here. And it has changed our lives it has impacted us all. Have we gained anything from this time of exile? 
I believe that we have. We've, we have all been forced into a slower, less demanding pace of life. Whereas before lockdown we were going to endless meetings and services and functions and on the treadmill we ran, suddenly all that stopped. We were restricted to where we could go, who we could meet with, how we could exercise. To be honest, I found it releasing. Personally, it gave me space to think, time to read, time to spend with God in prayer and reading the Bible. Amanda and I had time together with numerous, without numerous evening meetings. Life in some ways became more restful. For many, we were able to achieve more. The rectory garden was looking its best for years and I enjoyed it. But the fact that as Christians we were unable to meet for worship was the biggest hardship. As is not being able to have conversations over coffee after the service, I desire that friendship and fellowship that we are now missing. In our Gospel reading we hear Jesus explaining to the disciples their impending loss. It is that downward then upward stroke that we see in both readings. Jeremiah going down with a warning, then up to restoration and God's promises. Jesus explaining about his death, the downside, but through his resurrection we are secure in the knowledge of salvation through the cross and resurrection. His promises, for without the death of Christ for us, and his resurrection on the third day, what hope would there be for humanity? For us. As this pandemic continues over the next months or years we must always remember that these events have happened before. Steve Turner, a Christian poet, said this, history repeats itself, it has to, no one listens. These diseases have happened before, but for us we have been spared many of them. More people died worldwide through the Spanish flu after the First World War than in the First World War. The Black Death, the bubonic plague, warnings from history, but we were blind to the prospect of anything like that happening in our lifetime. Now here we are, we are all facing the consequences of this disease. But as we learn from history, from the Bible, change will come. As spring follows winter, our journeying will improve. Our way of life will improve. Our freedoms will be restored. We will be restored. A full restoration is our desire, as was the Israelites as they were carried into captivity. Jeremiah prophesied about the return. As Jesus told of his death, he also gave assurances of his return. The experience changed them, and this will change us. As yet, we can't fully know how. At the moment, things look bleak. But as we used to say when I was nursing, slight improvement noted. Things are improving but we need to listen, to stay alert, and rely on the promises of God. In him we have the hope of salvation. In him we put our trust.
so shall we pray together. Lord Jesus, as you carried your burden up the hill of Calvary, so we carry our burdens and griefs to you now. On behalf of your bruised and heart-sore world. We name before you the anguish of all that we have lost. The freedoms we so quickly took for granted. The care expressed in a hand held, a hug offered, an arm extended for support, which is now not possible. We pray for your church throughout the world and especially today in places where Christians are persecuted and misunderstood, cast out of their communities, ostracised and ridiculed as Jeremiah was. Thank you Lord Jesus that you walked the same path of rejection and pain and that all who walk it today Never walk that path alone, for you are with them. Give strength to those who are isolated from other Christians, who have no church in which they can worship or to whom they can belong. We pray today for all missionaries and especially for Tim and Miranda, our own missionaries that we support through St Mary's, as a new academic year awaits for their family. Remembering in particular their daughter Kezi, who will be settling into British culture as she begins this new chapter in her education. Give your strength to all who serve you today. We recognise that there have been many losses and many griefs at this time and that we still live with restriction and struggle. We ask for your wisdom for all who set policy, for all who advise the government in areas of science and medicine. We pray for those who are exhausted and emotionally drained by all that these months have demanded from them. Lord, sustain those who feel overwhelmed by the complexities and challenges of life. We pray for those who work in care homes, sheltered housing complexes, for all who support those in the community who are unable to cope independently, and for all who wake to the gloom of dark despair today. May your light shine in their darkness and your hope burn bright for them today. We pray for our schools as they prepare to return to class teaching, for staff and students that they will find fruitful learning taking place after many months out of class, that children will be inspired to achieve their full potential and will be encouraged to do so. We remember those beginning secondary education and for all who are preparing to start apprenticeships or university courses leaving the safety of home for the first time. We hold all these prayers before you in the name of our friend and saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace this day and always. Amen.